Hey guys, today I'm making a cauliflower soup. It's a typical Polish soup um, that a lot of people make. It's pretty easy, um, it's relatively quick for a soup, and you just have to put everything into a pot and let that boil. Um, so I will show you what you need. Okay, so these are all of the ingredients. Obviously, we're gonna start off with some chicken. Um, I like to use chicken thighs for my soup with bone and the skin. And then, um, obviously the skin is fat, so you're gonna see like bubbling on top of the soup. I'll show you guys later, but you just have to skim that off, but it gives it a better flavor. Um, so I have this set, obviously some salt and some pepper, cauliflower, depending on the size of the cauliflower, Cauliflower, you either need a whole cauliflower or if it's a large one, half. So we'll see how this goes once I start cutting it all up. You need three carrots, one leek, three potatoes, again, depending on the size. Um, these are pretty big. So I'm going to cut these up again and see how much it really is uh, before I add them to the soup some fresh dill for topping, and here are the interesting vegetables. So this is a parsley root. Um, some people, or a lot of people know of a parsnip, that is different. So when you go to a grocery store and you ask for a parsley root, make sure that that's what you're getting and you're not getting a parsnip. They're from the same root uh, vegetable family, um, but there are different things. So this is the root and this is actually parsley that you get at the store. So what I'm gonna do is use these two for the soup, but I'm gonna cut this off and then put it in my fridge and use the parsley for something else. This is celery root and this one, this is like a giant one. So again, it really depends on the size that you get. I'm gonna use probably a quarter of this for my soup and then save the rest for another time. Um, but sometimes the celery root comes um, in the size of a, you know, a large potato or a beet or something like that. So I got cut off, but I was saying that sometimes the celery root comes in a smaller size um, comparable to a beet or like a large potato or something. And then you can use that whole root for the soup. But because this is ginormous, um, I'm only going to use, you know, a quarter. So just to give you an overview how this is going to work, um, you have to put the chicken into a pot of water and let that cook for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes um, until it starts boiling and you see like a foam on top of the pot, uh, which you have to remove. Um, and then you have to add all of the vegetables and let that cook for a little bit more, then it's basically done. So before I put the chicken into the pot of water, I like to peel and cut the vegetables uh, so that I'm ready to put them in when it's time. So I'm gonna start off with the potatoes and um, continue with the leeks and the carrots and all of that. Um, the cauliflower goes in pretty much the last um, into the pot, so I will save that for um, the latest thing to cut. So I cut up the vegetables, they're ready to go. This is the one leek, the carrots, the parsley root, the celery root, this is the quarter that I ended up cutting and peeling. And the potatoes are in here, they're in cold water. Um, another tip, once you peel your potatoes, um, they oxidize and they can turn a darker color. So to prevent that, just put them in cold water. Just another quick tip about leeks, if you've never uh, worked with them before they have like all these layers they're from an onion from the onion family so it's very similar um, and also why it's sometimes used instead of onions because it has that flavor anyways if you cut it in half lengthwise like this then you're able to run this un under the water and get all of the dirt out of all of these little creases because the dirt tends to um, stay in here. If you don't get the dirt out, then it's gonna be in your soup or whatever you're using to cook it and it's not very good. And same thing with here. So what I do is actually, this like the whole leek, I cut it in half, then cut this in half, clean it, then I cut this in half and I clean it. And I usually trim the tops also, um, just because they're usually like wilted. 
And now I'm going to um, start cooking the chicken. So I put the chicken into the pot and you have to cover it with six cups of water. So this is two cups. Uh, so I need a few more. Um, I like to rinse my chicken under cold water in the sink, especially if I am uh, making soup. Um, just because sometimes you could get little pieces of bone when they cut it or shards, um, f like really tiny shards from the uh, knife in the meat. So I like to rinse it. I know this is like a controversial thing, but um, I prefer to rinse it. So I'm gonna add the rest of the water and then start cooking. So while the chicken cooks in there, I cut up the cauliflower. So I make them into small bite-sized pieces. Um, this is about half of a cauliflower. This is the other half I'm gonna put in the fridge for dinner another time. And I also cut up the potatoes, again, smaller bite-sized pieces um, to add to the soup. Chicken is cooking here, and this is the foam that I was telling you guys about. So I take this spoon thing and I just skim it and I get rid of this and I dump it into the sink. Okay. Now you can add all of these vegetables. So the ooh, parsley root goes in and the celery root and the leeks go in. The carrots. Okay, getting all of this in there. So it makes a nice broth. Push this down a little bit. And you cook this for 20 minutes, and then we're gonna add the cauliflower and the potatoes and some seasoning and all of that jazz. But right now, leave this cooking for 20 minutes. So the soup is done cooking. It's been cooking for 20 minutes. Now we're gonna fish everything out of here. So here are all the vegetables and the chicken. This is just the broth. Um, keep this aside just to cool down. We're gonna add some of the chicken back in and cut up the carrots and a little bit of the parsley root as well and add that back into the um, soup. But right now it's very hot, so let that cool down, set it aside. And I'm going to add the cauliflower um, to the soup and this will cook for 10 minutes the cauliflower is done cooking in the soup it was uh, about 10 minutes now I'm going to add the potatoes I just um, dumped all the water and I'm going to add this looking at this um, I don't want it to be too many potatoes so I don't think I'm going to end up using this whole thing I'm just going to have to keep them in the rest in cold water and uh, use them tomorrow for something else so we'll see how it goes but I'm just going to start putting them in so I added the potatoes um, here are the leftovers so like I said I'm just gonna put that in cold water put it in the fridge and then I'll cook it tomorrow um, with something else you cook this until the potatoes are soft so another about 10 minutes but it could be a little bit longer just keep an eye out I took some carrots already. I chopped them up over here and then I chopped up some dill. Once the potatoes are done cooking in there in, in, in the soup, I'm able to add this and taste it. Then I can add some salt and pepper depending on what the flavor's like. Um, the recipe also calls for a little bit of cream to be added, but I can't have any cream. So I will show you a quick um, trick to give it a little bit of a creaminess to a soup without adding dairy. So the question is, what are we going to do with the rest of this? Um, as far as the vegetables go, I pretty much throw them out. There is a Polish recipe that you can make a um, the salad from cooked vegetables, um, but I am not a huge fan of it, so I'm not going to make that. Also, the celery root is a little tough. Usually I would cut this up and also add it to the soup, um, but I took a bite of it and it's kind of stringy and I just don't want to add it to the soup. So I'm gonna get rid of that. But the chicken, I'm going to make little patties um, that I fry up that we can eat with the soup or on the side um, of the soup. 
So the potatoes are done cooking. Um, now I'm gonna show you how I make it creamy without adding any dairy. So what I did is I fished out some of the uh, potato cauliflower mixture that's already in there, put it into my Vitamix and added some of the broth that's in there. And I'm going to just mix it up. Remember, take this part off um, when you are dealing with hot stuff. I can't do it with one hand because otherwise it's going to explode. Ah, there we go. So see, it has a hole. Okay. So this is now done. Um, it just becomes creamy and it gives the soup a creaminess. And I'm just gonna add that back in. So see, the soup looks like it has milk or cream in it but there is no milk, no cream. I do this with a lot of um, soups that call for dairy and it's awesome. So now I'm just going to add this and then we're done. I just added some more uh, salt and pepper and I'm gonna mix it up and then it is perfect. Since the soup is done, now I'm going to tell you guys more about the chicken. I separated the chicken from the bone um, that came out of the soup. I'm going to make patties, as I said. So I'm putting this aside. Now I'm frying up one onion. Once this is translucent, I'm going to add the onion and the chicken to a food processor so it becomes more of a... Um, mushy consistency i guess you would say um and then we're gonna add some um, an egg and some seasonings and uh, then fry them up in a pan so these are translucent and a little bit brown in some edges so they're ready to go i'm going to add that to my vitamix that the chicken's already in here and then zip it up so i know it looks kind of gross but it's all mixed up. I'm going to add this in here, add the seasonings, the egg, and then make the patty. So this is the mixture. I added some salt, some sweet paprika, a little bit of breadcrumbs, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and an egg. And obviously the chicken um, onion mixture, I'm going to mix it up and then make patties and fry them up. So I made a patty and then you just dip it on each side a little bit with extra breadcrumbs so it is nice and golden when it fries up, and then put that on the pan. Now they're frying. 